everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can generate PDFs in C-Sharp without using a PDF-specific library. And why is that important? Because every library out there is paid. In some capacity, they have a license and you need to pay. And sometimes getting that through the business to say, hey, we really need this, can you please pay as much as this developer is asking for, even though I think the prices are very reasonable, it's very hard sometimes to get this approved. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can generate PDFs without spending any money with a few very, very clever tricks. So let me show you what I have here. I have a C Sharp project and I'm intentionally using basically nothing, the bare minimum. All I have here and all we're going to start with is an empty console application. And then I have a few things because I'm going to use the invoice concept as a concept to generate PDFs because I think it's the most common thing people generate with PDF generators, especially in C Sharp. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a model over here to represent my invoice, you know, have the number, issue date, due date. You've seen an invoice before. If not, you're lucky because they can get very tricky. And then I have a generator which generates one over here and it uses bogus to generate a few random items for example the invoice number the date a bunch of other things like a fake company and so on and we're going to use those components in the pdf invoice now how are we going to do that i've shown how you can use quest pdf that allows you to have a programmatic experience with a fluent api and if you want to see that video there's a link in the description down below you can check that out in this video what we're going to do is we're going to generate html and turn that html into a pdf and I know there's libraries like Iron PDF that I think are great libraries if you can get a paid license to use them, but we're going to get to a very similar experience without using those libraries. So ultimately the experience I want to have here is a Blazor-like experience where I can have my Razor components and turn them into HTML and turn that HTML into PDF, giving me a very, very flexible approach to PDFs. You can make components, you can make items, you can reuse. It is quite frankly awesome however i don't want to have an entire blazor project and i can only add the components i need so i can have any sort of application or even make a library out of this and then reuse it everywhere to generate pdfs so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to go over here and i'm going to add the new git package microsoft.aspnetcore.components.web i am going to need this for a bunch of things when it comes to the Razor components. And I'm also going to add the Microsoft.extensions.logging New Year package. And in this case, it's actually already installed, so I don't need to install it explicitly. And then what I want to do is I want to go to the CS proj and I want to turn this into a Microsoft.net.sdk.razor project. Ultimately, all this is doing behind the scenes, it's, it's implicitly adding a bunch of NuGet packages. You could just go ahead and add them manually, but this will also give you a better experience in your ID because now you'll be able to say, you know, make my Blazor component and then I can name this whatever I want, which in fact is exactly what I'm going to do. So to represent my invoice in a component, I'm going to say invoice page or invoice view or invoice component or however you want to represent that. And then this is just your good old Blazor-like experience. Now, I don't want this to be just a quick demo to show you something simple because... I think that sort of defeats the purpose. I want to show you what a real PDF generated by this thing could look like. For that reason, here's something I prepared earlier. Now, we have a bunch of stuff here, and in this specific scenario, I have just a single Razor component. You could split all of this into its own components and subcomponents. Ultimately, I want to make it very simple for you to just grab the code from the description down below and change this to whatever you want. But this just represents an invoice and I have my invoice number, dates, and so on, and you're going to see how we're going to visualize this. But ultimately, all this is really doing is it is making an invoice on an HTML page. Now, obviously, this is a Razor page, and we don't have any Blazor engine. This is just a console application still. So how are we going to do that? How are we going to populate this parameter over here, which represents my invoice? Well, that's where the magic comes in. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to introduce a service container and service provider because we want to have all that dependency injection registration because all that will still be functional in your application in your components so you'll be able to inject whatever you want and use it here with the approach i'm going to show you now before i show you the code i want to let you know that we just lost our back to school discount on dome train so until the 30th of september you can use discount code bts30 at checkout to get 30 percent off any of our courses there's no better time to invest in your learning than just coming back from holiday, which is what I just did, if I look a bit tanned. And it doesn't stop there because we just also released three brand new courses. One becoming a more productive developer using AI by Kevin Docs. 
excellent course, amazing. If you want to learn how to use tools like Copilot very effectively, you must take that course. And then a new course on configuration and options in .NET to manage configuration and options in any type of .NET application, as well as a brand new course on reflection in .NET by Nick Cosentino. Not only can you get all of those courses on a 30% discount, but you can use discount code BTS15 to get any of our already discounted bundles of 50% off, as well as BTS20 at checkout to get 20% off the Dome Trend Pro subscription that gives you access to all of our courses. Okay, now back to the video and let's take a look at the code. So first I'm going to have my service collection. That's where all the services are going to be registered. And for example, if I want to say service.add logging, that's where this comes in. And you can add any type of service and it's going to be resolved into your components. Amazing feature, makes life so much easier and you can make such flexible components. Then I want to materialize my service container. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say service provider equals services dot build service provider. And now I have my container and then I can resolve services. So first I'm going to get my logger factory because that's required by what's going to basically take the razor components and turn them into HTML. For that, I'm going to say await using var HTML render equals new HTML renderer. That's coming from that component NuGet package we just added a few moments ago. And then service provider goes here and logger factory goes here. And now I have my HTML render, the thing that will render my HTML. So to take this razor component, run it through the pipeline and turn it into HTML, all I need to say is HTML equals to the renderer. And then I'm going to say dispatcher dot invoke async. And then I'm going to say async over here and pass my work item. So I'm going to have all of my conversion logic here. Now I need a way to pass my parameters into that component. So I'm going to say parameters equals new dictionary. I'm going to represent them as a dictionary. In my case, what I need to pass down based on the name because the name is invoice, I need to pass down an invoice object. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say invoice equals invoice generator dot generate. And that's going to create an invoice and it's going to put that in the dictionary. And I'm going to say parameters equal parameter view dot from dictionary. So create a parameter view from that dictionary I'm passing down. And then I'm going to say output equals await HTML renderer dot render component async. I'm going to pass down the invoice view or invoice page, whatever you want to name it, and then the parameters down there. And then I'm going to say return output dot to HTML string. So pass that through the pipeline and return the HTML string. Now that is cool. And if I just say console dot write line HTML and I run this application as it is, what you're going to see is that I'm going to get all that HTML rendered over here. Not quite because I do have to await this over here. So I'm going to say await the renderer and do that again. And what you're going to see now is a bunch of HTML with clearly replaced parameters. But I want to visualize that. And yes, there are libraries like Iron PDF, for example, that allows me to just pass down the HTML and convert it into PDF. But there's many, many other tools, if you can use them, that also allow you to do the exact same thing. One of those things is Playwright, which is Microsoft's puppeteer version that allows you to do some really cool browser automation and testing, but it also has a PDF functionality or an HTML to PDF functionality that is pretty good. Many, many people are using it. Now, I don't know if it's going to fit every single criteria that you might have, but it's really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and add Playwright or Microsoft.Playwright. And the first thing you need to do with Playwright is you need to run a partial script, which comes with a project that just installs all the browsers needed by Playwright behind the scenes because it's still doing some browser stuff with Chromium and Firefox and whatever Safari is doing. So we can do that by running the script, which can be found, by the way, in the bin folder, exactly where the project compiles. It's called Playwright.ps or PS1. I think it's PS1 because it's partial. But you can also say Microsoft.Playwright.program and that's basically exactly what that partial script is running. And then say main and pass install as the parameter. And if you run just this line just once, and this is very handy for testing as well, if you're running it in a clean machine every single time. But if I do that, then it's going to go ahead and just install all the browsers. Now, in my case, it didn't really do anything because I already have them. But if you don't have them, you can use this and it's very handy. I'm going to just comment it out in case you want to grab the code from the description and run this for yourself. And now that I have this, 
all I need to do is use the browser capabilities of Playwright and then use the PDF conversion. Now you can use Playwright as follows. You can say Playwright and you have this top level object and then we have a playwright.create async and then we create a browser. So we're going to say playwright.chromium because I want to use the Chromium engine. And then I'm going to say launch async with new launch settings. And I'm going to say that it is the headless version, meaning no browser is actually going to just pop up in my face. It's just going to be all behind the scenes. You won't see anything basically. And then I'm going to say page equals browser dot new page async, but I'm not going to navigate to some page and load that HTML. All I'm going to say is await page dot set content async and set that HTML I rendered as content. Once I do that, I can simply say page dot PDF async, so create a PDF out of this page, and I can pass down some settings so I can say a bunch of different things. We can have a footer template, header template. You can do some really, really cool and flexible stuff. I'm just going to keep it simple, and I'm just going to say that I want the format to be an A4 page, pretty standard for PDFs, and then that the path I want to generate this into is just invoice.pdf. In fact, let's just do this dot invoice dot pdf and that is it and then in the end i'm just gonna say page dot close async and that's it and now if i just run this page look what happens and pretty fast actually for what's happening behind the scenes so i have this now running and if i go to that path the one i just generated the invoice in as you can see over here i have a brand new pdf invoice ready to be shipped to whoever i want really just like that no libraries no nothing it's very flexible all of this can be componentized you can just have this as a component this as a component like anything can be a component and we're using the good old razor engine you can inject things you can retrieve things it's very very flexible i think it's very very nice and cool and i think you should start here in most cases and if this poses a problem you can't really solve then look into more specific solutions that are paid because i think this is sufficient for most cases. As always, the code is in the description down below. So if you want to grab that, just click that link and get it. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And which library are you using? Are you more on this camp and maybe Iron PDF? Are you more on the Quest PDF camp? And do you know of any free library that can do this even better? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.